The Syrian Ladies Benevolent Society is the debut novel of Toronto author Christina Stima, and it launches today. The book covers a century and a half in the lives of a family whose members eventually moved from the Middle East to Montreal. The sag is told through the interwoven stories of its women, culminating in the character of Azare as she journeys into that family history and tries to figure out how it has shaped her. Author Christina Stima joins me now in studio for Here and Now's Tuesday Afternoon Book Club. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. So nice to meet you. You are already an accomplished journalist, uh, a published short story writer, but as I mentioned, this is your first novel. What is today like for you, knowing that book is out there on shelves? Yeah, it's actually a really nerve-wracking experience. You know, I feel like being a freelance writer um, or even just selling short stories to newspapers and magazines is one thing, but to have an entire book with just your name on it and so you're fully responsible for it is a is another thing altogether. So I'm excited. I'm delighted. I am I feel like my dreams are coming true. And at the same time, I'm sweating. It's a very emotional day, I gather. <laughs> very emotional day. Yeah, yeah. So you are are yourself an Arab woman of mixed ethnicity. Um, This is a work of fiction, but how much of it was inspired by your own questions about your cultural identity and maybe by the stories you heard growing up? Yeah, um, I think there's a a lot of that is involved. Uh, The stories for sure are definitely informed by stories that I heard growing up about my family, about the women who came before me. But there is something to be said about when you come, when you live in Canada, but your ancestors came here over a century ago, you can feel a little disconnected from the country from whence they came. And when you don't have you know your family tree when you don't know the names of like your great grandparents your great great grandparents you don't know the women you don't know what they went through who they loved what they lost what was taken from them you start to fill in the blanks yourself and I think that in my case I didn't have a family tree and so I started to fashion my own and I was really interested in kind of like yeah, taking like a seed or a kernel of truth that I had heard like within my family and kind of running with it and see where that went and really interested in exploring those dynamics between um, years of tradition and what happens when that collides with a modern Canadian society. Tell me about the title, the Syrian Ladies Benevolent Society. Yeah, it's a fantastic title. I love that title. Um, it's actually based on, the, this is a real kernel of truth. Um, my Sitto, when she passed, Sitto is the Arabic word for grandmother. Uh, when she passed, I was going through her things, and I found a letter addressed to her from the Syrian Ladies Benevolent Society based out of Montreal. And it was written in 1949. And they were congratulating her on the birth of my mother and also her, quote, successful confinement, unquote. (laughs) Um, And I was just fascinated by this. And I didn't know anything about it. And I just thought, well, this is delightful. It's like some sort of society that's adjunct to the St. Nicholas Antiochian Orthodox Church, also in Montreal, that my great grandfather was the priest of. And so I was like, okay, I I love this title. I I also kind of love the idea of digging deeper into... Oh, there were entire communities in Montreal, uh, entire communities of women that, you know, were in- instrumental in, you know, fostering a sense of community for Arabs and, and other people in Montreal in the early part of the 20th century. And let's explore that. Right. So uh, the story is told, as we mentioned, from the experiences of women, bringing us eventually to Azare. Without giving too much away, um, tell us a bit about the journey that she undertakes and what inspires it. Sure, yeah. So uh, Azare, I feel, is um, a, she's a modern Canadian woman, but because she comes from, you know, an ethnicity that she feels a little bit detached from, um, you know, she's struggling, I think, to kind of fit in in modern society, modern Canadian society. Like, am I just a product of all of the people who came before me? Or am I in this constant state of um, n- renewal? Can I m- forge my own path? Am I am I beholden to make the same mistakes as the women who came before me, or can I break free and start something new? And I think what we see in the book is, even though she is, I would call the main protagonist of it, the book actually starts in the middle of the 19th century, where we meet her ancestors and we follow them through the 20th century, and we kind of see when we finally get to Azrae, oh, okay, so we know who the women were. Maybe she doesn't know who the women were that came before her, but she, but we know. And we can kind of see her make some of the same mistakes. Sometimes she chooses the same solution. Sometimes she tries to break free from it. She's making mistakes, 
and she's trying to figure it out and you kind of root for her to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that was really interesting to me to explore these ideas of intergenerational trauma and how, you know, the pain that our ancestors felt can still be felt with us today and what how that might manifest, you know. I definitely feel like within my family, I don't know, you know, a lot of the women who came before me, their stories have been lost, as most women's stories have been mm-hmm. lost to time, you know. Um, and I really... But I can feel something in my veins. I can feel the women who came before me. I can hear their voices in my veins. Tell me about uh, portraying these generations of Arabic women. Because, you know, for for those of us in this country and others, we sometimes look at other cultures that we don't know, don't understand. And those perceptions are informed by current events, you know, Mm -hmm. and and what's happening in the Middle East right now is obviously front of mind for so many people. Mm -hmm. Tell me how, what you want us to take away from from the women that you portray in this book. Yeah, I think it's been very much for foremost in my mind to push people's perceptions about what they think, not just about Arabs or about Arab women, but Arab Canadian women and modern Arab, Arab Canadian women. I there is a there is a certain narrative that a lot of people fall trapped to, where you kind of sort of believe, you know, oh, well, if you're an Arab, then you dress like this but not like this and you believe in this but you don't believe in this and you say this but you don't say this and I kind of wanted to bust all of that open especially because I think it's shocking to a lot of people to learn how much Arabs have first of all how long we've been in this country my family has came to Canada in the 19th century but also like how we've shaped the fabric of Canada and how what a shame it would be had we not come here Um, You know, I have war heroes in my family, a justice of the peace, a journalist, a priest, um, pillars of of society. And for me, it's really important to provoke people a little bit and be like, why is it that you think, you know, Mm -hmm. Arab or or Arab women are like that? Um, And kind of I, I don't necessarily endorse a way of life, but I merely describe one and I leave the reader to kind of make their own decisions about it. So I'm displaying or I'm writing about, a um, you know, a, a whole family, kind of like a family saga in this book and really hope that people can take away from it. You know, Arab, it's really at the end of the day, I mean, it's just a moniker. You know, mm-hmm. we're all we all want the same thing. We love our kids. We want them to do well. We want them to grow up safe, just like everybody else. And in in Canada, we're just as Canadian as as anybody else. Before I let you go, I have to ask you briefly: What does your own family think of the book? <laughs> um, well, to be honest, my family hasn't actually read the entire manuscript yet. They've read uh, bits and pieces here and there. And I am looking forward to the moment when they do get to the more provocative and button pushing <laughs> sections of the book. Um, I sincerely believe that they will be incredibly supportive, but I'm also, that's part of the nerves. <laughs> of course. Well, I know it's launching officially, I guess, this evening, and the book is available today. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. Thanks for having me.